So again, welcome to introduction to system analysis and also design. This is our unit one part three lectures, which will focus on feasibility analysis. So feasibility analysis normally will guide the organization in determining whether to, pro to proceed with a project. So feasibility analysis also identifies the important risk that associate with a project that must be managed if the project is approved. And the feasibility analysis focus on three important aspects. One will be the economic feasibility. Is the funds available for the project or the costs and the benefit is, is good? And also technical feasibility. Is the technology, the technology we are going to use, is, is it a new technology or it has been used before? So here we say, as with a system request, each organization has its own process and format for the feasibility analysis, but most include techniques to assess the three areas, technical feasibility, economic feasibility, organizational feasibility. So the results of evaluating these three feasibility factors are combined into a feasibility studies. So technical feasibility is very important. Is the new project that we are going to implement is it the new technology? Then if it's a new technology, the chance of failure of the project will be very high. If it's a whole technology which has been used before, experience already taught us how the system will perform. So technical feasibility, if it's a new technology, we have issue of failure high. If it's a whole technology that has been used before, then the success is very high, failure is very low. Then also we discuss about organizational feasibility. So the first is the technical feasibility. Here we say technical feasibility is the extent to which the system can be successfully designed, developed, and installed by the IT group. So we want to know if this technology for implementing the system is a new technology or is it an existing technology. If it's an existing, as we said earlier, the success is very high. If it's a new technology, the chance of failure will be very high. So it is, in essence, a technical risk analysis that strives to answer the question, can we build? It's very important. Risk also can endanger the successful completion of a project. And the following aspects should be considered. For example, the users, the analysis, should be familiar with the application or with the technology. Familiarity with the technology, project size, now compatibility of the new system with the technology that already exists. Economic feasibility, here we are talking about the cost and benefit of the system. So cost and benefit analysis. Is the cost at win the benefit, then we don't need a system. But if the benefit, the cost reduce and the benefit is high. So cash flow analysis and measures, the IT project again involve an initial investment that produces a steam of benefit over time, along with the some ongoing support cash costs. So cash flow both the inflow and outflow are estimated over some future period. Uh, so this example, a simple cash flow projection. Uh, here we say we have a project, and then the total benefit for year zero is nothing. By year one, we say 45,000, year two, 50,000, year three, 57,000. So in a total of three years, the total benefit will be 152,000. Total cost is 100,000 beginning, then 10,000, 12, 16, total is 138. So the net benefit here will be 14,000, which is 158 minus 138. The total benefit minus the total cost. Now, if the net benefit is a negative value, then it's not a good idea. 
which means the cost totally at win is more than the benefit. So common methods for evaluating a project worth, we can use the return of investment, return on investment. So return on investment will be the total benefit minus the total cost divided by the total cost. Also break every point where the total cost and the total revenue are the same. We can analyze the break even point. So this is an example of a break even point. So discounted, discounted cash flow techniques. Here we said discounted case flows are used to compare the present value of all cash inflows and also add flows for the project in today's dollar 10. So the PV, which is the present value, always is the cash flow amount divided by one plus the rate of return to the power N. N will be the number of years or the period. Also, we say the net present value is the difference between the total present value of the benefit and what the total present value of the cost. And that will give us the next the so this example again, we can see the total benefit, the present value of the total benefit. Then we have total cost and the present value of total cost. So steps to conduct an economic feasibility analysis first, we should identify the cost and benefit. Then we need to assign values to cost and also the benefit. Then we determine the cash flow. Then assess the project's economic value. That's the example can be doing return of investment or net present value calculations. So identify cost and benefit. Here we say the cost and benefit may be breaking down into four categories, the development costs, operational costs, tangible benefit, and intangibles. An example given here, we can see development costs, operational costs, tangible benefit, and also intangible benefit. So intangible benefit can be higher quality products. We cannot quantify it. Uh, reduction in inventory can be tangible benefit. We, we can quantify it. Or uh, reduction in IT costs. So this is an example given to where, where we assign values to cost and benefit. Uh, here we have the year from 2012 to 2016 in the total. So increment, increase, uh, increase sales is for, uh, yeah, we have half a million. By 2014, it uh, become 530,000. 2015, 561. We can see that it's increasing. The reduction in customer complaint calls, and there was no any reduction the same. Reduce inventory costs, there was no reduction, it's the same. Then we also have the development costs. In this case, we said two servers, we buy two servers, a printer, software license, software, server software, development labs. So determine the cash flow here, we say the former Cost benefit analysis usually contains the cost and benefit over selected number or years to show cash flow over time. So we can determine the ROI, which is the return of investment, or BEP or MPV. So the next is the organization feasibility. And uh, here we see organizational feasibility of the system is how well the system automatically will be accepted by its users 
and also incorporate into the ongoing operation of the organization. And you'll see there are many organization factors that can have an impact on a project and also seasoned developers known that organization feasibility can be the most difficult feasibility dimension to assess. And in essence, an organization feasibility analysis is to answer the question, if we build it, will they come? Or one way to assess the organization feasibility is to understand how well the goals of the project align with the business objectives and organizational strategy. And the second way to assess the organization feasibility is to conduct what we call the stakeholders analysis. So here we say the stakeholder is a person or group or organization that can affect a new system. Can be the project champion, system users, organization management, and other stakeholders. So in summary, these lectures, we study what is a feasibility and also how do we analyze it. And we say it's breaking into three parts, which is the technical feasibility, organizational feasibility, and also te technical, technical feasibility and economic feasibility. So we have technical feasibility, economic feasibility, and organization. So technical will be dealing with the technology. If it's a new technology, chance of failure will be high. If it's an old technology which has been used before, the chance of success of the project is high. Economic will be the cost and benefit of the system, the funds available, etc. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you.